This is a beautiful example of what I will be discussing in this video. Thanks to a public cheat called ABS, it was this player that found the green keycard on Labs. This player reached out to me on Discord and wanted to have their clip featured, but remain anonymous. Now, what if I told you that anyone can do exactly what this player is doing and not get banned? You see, that's the exact problem that EFT is currently facing. This player has cheated consistently over 2300 hours and still has not been banned. And most likely, they never will be. So with that, I want to welcome you to Closet Cheating. Before we start, I need to make a disclaimer, and that's the fact that I do not endorse specific cheats or cheating as a whole. This video is going to feature a lot of cheating footage, but it's only meant to spread awareness and shine light on these issues. So with that out of the way, let's roll. By now, most of you should have seen the video, The Wiggle That Killed Tarkov. It now has 3.5 million views. The reason I bring this up is because the video demonstrated that the majority of cheaters are closet cheating. They're not using aimbot. It's this exact principle that this video will be building off of. Before we get any further, I want to quickly define closet cheating for what it is and what I mean by it because I've found this to be the best way to explain it. Closet cheating is the combined use of an undetected cheat with legit looking gameplay. You cannot have closet cheating without both of these things. Now this is important. Legit looking gameplay allows closet cheaters to not get banned manually by BSG staff. Because what happens is, is if their stats look legit and nobody's reporting them, then BSG will never take the time to investigate their accounts. The second thing is this. If the cheat running is undetected, then BattleEye cannot issue a ban either. And so this is exactly what's happening. Closet cheaters are getting by for thousands of hours and they're not getting banned. They can cheat as long as they want. So now you should begin to understand why closet cheating is the real issue here. If you have such a large cesspool community of closet cheaters that are able to get by without getting banned, I mean, it's just common sense to think that a game couldn't survive. As more and more people cheat and not get banned, the more and more people are going to want to cheat because they can't get banned. And so, again, this is the current circumstance that I think that we're facing. We're in this new frontier where more and more people are finding out that you can cheat with no repercussions. There's just no incentive not to cheat if you're one of those people who's willing to because you can cheat for thousands of hours or forever and you're not going to get banned if you do it correctly. And as more people find out about this and the knowledge spreads, and it will spread, the more and more people are going to go and cheat. So this is everything that I want to preface the video with. I did it as fast as I could. Now I just want to get into the evidence that I have to support the claims and the, the real interesting stuff on how people are able to do this without getting banned. So let's get to the interesting stuff, the details and specifics on how people are doing this and all the information that I think that you should know. I want to begin with this. Um, according to my research, there's only two ways to effectively closet cheat on this game. It involves using uh, two different play styles of cheating, if you will. The first closet cheating method is occasional cheating. Closet cheaters will purchase a cheat and they will only cheat for a day here and there. Then after their cheat expires, they go back to playing legit. By far, this is what most players are doing to cheat. This is why we have the term weekend warrior. It's the guys that come home from their 50 hour shift and they swipe their credit cards on the weekends and they game away. Now, unlike the first method, the second method is much more long term. The players that are closet cheating this way are closet cheating for months to wipes on end. Oftentimes they just purchased a lifetime subscription to a cheat so that they don't have to pay for it every month. Closet cheating kind of exists on a spectrum. On one end you got the short term and on the other end you got the long term. You got your weekend warriors that are doing it here and there. And then you got your 40 year old dads with kids crying in the background that purchased a $600 cheat license for lifetime. This overview was just meant to introduce both methods. Now I want to get into the specifics, starting with the first. So for the first method of closet cheating, there's a cheat called ABS. It is what most players in this category of closet cheating are using. It is the same cheat that Goat used in his Wiggle video. It would take too long to provide an in-depth account of this cheat. So what I will do is provide you with all of the information that you need to know. ABS has dominated the EFT cheat market for many years. During the peak wipe times, ABS has over 5,000 active members every single day. The combined member count of their biggest three discords have 21,000 people. Look at this screenshot that I took from one of ABS's most popular retail sites displaying its detection history. You can see that it's NA. It has yet to be detected. A large portion, if not the majority, of Tarkov's cheating player base would disappear overnight. 
if BSG could finally shut them down for good. To build off that, this cheat is almost single-handedly crippling the game, and that's because of two reasons. Number one, ABS is accessible to any individual with a desire to cheat and Google. And number two, the cheat is dirt cheap. It is priced with an average cost of $7. It is literally retailed by nearly every single cheat provider on the EFT cheat market, and I don't think it's outrageous to say that it accounts for a majority of their sales. So that is why in this video for closet cheating using the first method, I'm not going to talk about all the other public cheats that you can buy. So for this reason only, I'm going to focus on ABS. So there's no point in using any other cheat because the other ones get you banned. But I don't want you to take my word for it. Listen to this interesting interview I had with a player that I reached out to on one of the ABS discords. There's a lot of these interviews coming up, so I did cut out some of the dialogue to cut to the important stuff. But check out the interview. What's been your greatest observation since using ABS? More hackers, like closet cheaters. People like know you're there. And what sparked your desire to cheat in the first place? Mostly the other cheaters, because it was it was the last wipe or two wipes ago that the cheaters were rampant. They there were so many of them. Yeah. Like you, like right before Goat's video, there was every raid, every two raids that you at least found one hacker. All the high values were looted. And then after Goat's video, most of the cheats went like went went down because he showed the big ones like ABS, but then it came back up. And then I I saw the video. I was like, well, I just keep getting hacked on. Might as well take a look. And then I didn't cheat until about three months after Goat's video. What is your thoughts and opinions then on ABS being undetected? Um. It's 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 bad, man. Like I see a lot of players using it, just like closet hacking, just just running around the outsides of the map, looting the high values. It's it's really bad. Yeah, BSG needs to like crack down on it. I don't know what to say, but they just need to get better at it because their battle light anti cheat's not that good right now, and it never has been. There was one wipe where it was decent at most. Do you have anything to say to players that are considering closet cheating for themselves? To be honest. Don't. It's it's gonna ruin you. You're gonna you're gonna look at a game the different. You're gonna look at, at like Tarkov completely different, and you're just gonna be not. I don't want to say hooked, but it's not gonna be good, to say the least. Because I mean, I'm part of the problem. BSG has to know about this cheat, right? I mean, do you think that they're aware that this cheat exists? Yeah. I mean, I I want to say Battlestate knows about them, but. They just want to forget about him, I guess. Shout out to that guy for his help with the interview. This next interview I had here is a player that was using ABS, and I found him on Labs. You can just watch the clip unfold, but I was able to confirm that he was a cheater and then use VoIP to set up an interview. It didn't record the beginning parts of the VoIP interaction, but that's okay because he was able to join my Discord call and uh, smooth sailing from there. Most of these guys don't wiggle anymore, so once I saw that he was wiggling, I thought, all right, you know, this might work out. He joins call, then we run to the basement where the interview starts. All right, brother, let's just roll the questions. <coughs> so what sheet are you currently using? ABS. Why ABS? I had a friend that cheats. And how many times have you used it? Probably five or six, like a week. How many hours do you have on the game? Uh, I have 1,700. Why do you cheat? Uh, kind of bored. I'm going off. It's my last wipe. I don't have my PC anymore. So, kind of bored and decided to do it because I'm tired of getting destroyed by cheaters. How bad do you think closet cheating is on laps? Oh, God. Awful. There's at least one every other raid, if not every raid. Have you gotten any key cards with ABS? Um, I found one yellow card, but... My buddy has found like four yellow cards and like a black or like two black cards. Oh, actually, I pulled a red card off of Killa like two days ago. What are your thoughts on closet cheating? Uh, closet cheating? I feel like you see a lot more of it than you do rage cheating. Uh, it's mainly like you'll spawn in, like you'll see where all the shit is, and then there'll be a computer, like a GPU in a computer, and you see a guy run straight to the computer. It's like, okay. <laughs> Well, that was obvious. In your opinion, why do you think people closet cheat? 
I feel like I I understand how people can enjoy it, but honestly, I get really bored really fast. Like, cause I already had Kappa, so there's not much. Like my desire of the game is pushing Kappa and then just PVP on labs, but labs are just infested with cheaters to swipe. So I completely just stopped playing for like a month, and then I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna just I'm gonna give in and buy a cheat. I want to thank that guy for coming on here and doing an interview with me. Uh, we're going to move on to the next interview that I had with an ABS cheater, and I found this guy also on Labs, so check this out. All right, brother man, I want to get started with this. What cheat are you currently using? It's ABS because because uh, I use it for a while, but you know they, they ban like every two weeks, so you know. What type of cheater would you classify yourself as? Are you more of a closet cheater? Because I haven't seen many people wiggle at me, so I was pretty surprised when you did. I'm about as careful as careful can be. I don't kill people unless they directly attack me. I do have a higher KD, but it's not amongst the highest. Have you seen any good loot on labs yet as a result of having ESP? Uh, honestly, one yellow key card uh, this entire wipe. And that was this this uh, past past two raids, I think two raids ago. Other than having your buddy get you into cheating in the first place, why do you continue to cheat? I do it because I just want to relax, and I love the graphics. I love the loot. I don't want to kill people. I don't want to ruin their loot. Um, sometimes I do feel bad taking like the graphics cards and let. On any servers, in your experience, how many cheaters, especially closet cheaters, are you seeing per raid? No, I can I can guarantee you every map, every single game, two cheaters, no less. I can I promise you. A lot of them don't wanna don't wanna interact and they'll just ignore your signs, but they there I can guarantee you two every single raid. Shout out to this player for taking time out of his day to help me. Um, I think that what he said was mostly true regarding everything and the fact that players, especially on labs, are super closet and they're just running around taking the loot and they're not even fighting anybody. But to uh, further elaborate on this idea, I have a lot of footage of me running around the map doing the exact same thing, not killing anybody and just taking all the high valuable spawns. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, if there were legit players on the map, I would give them all the items at the end of the raid. It was a way to smoke out the cheaters, if there were any, because uh, most of the cheaters these days... They don't wiggle, they don't identify themselves, they're super closet. And so if I took all the rear item spawns, they would get pissed and they would come after me. And that allowed me to have much more success in confronting uh, the cheaters on the- For example, some of the clips in this video feature me getting marked keys. Um, that was a really big indicator. If there was a marked key on the map, like let's say Dorm's mark key or one of the reserve ones, the cheaters would immediately come after me. Um, a lot of times they didn't even want it. They just wanted me to die because I knew where it was and I was the first one to get it. It happened multiple times where a cheater did not kill me. After getting the mark key, they just kind of look at me in disappointment and remain passive throughout the raid, in which case I was able to survive and give the last player on the map, who is usually legit, uh, the marked key. And again, if this footage demonstrates anything, it's the fact that you can just run around the map and steal all the good items without having to fight anybody. But in order to do so, you obviously have to have ESP so that you know which paths that you can take uh, to avoid players correctly. One of the most important things I learned just running around and stealing all the loot is it's very easy. I'm inexperienced at doing it, but just knowing where players are allows me to take uh, good pathing routes to avoid other players. And so I never ran into the issue of almost dying to a player because I was trying to go get a GPU or a LEDX. It never happened. The only time I would ever run into any trouble is if there was another cheater that knew what was up, and so they were trying to stop me from taking the items myself. If anything, this footage raises the question, right, how many of your raids are, are being emptied of the good loot, um, especially on labs, because there's a player in there that can see all the items. You don't need vacuum cheats to, to loot the map. You can just run around and do it yourself, especially on a map like labs where the loot is concentrated, and it, you know it's a smaller map you're able to just run around on your own two feet and take all the good spawns. And another important detail that hopefully most of you realize is the fact that there's a lot of loot that just spawns in, in the random containers, and there's just no way of a legit player knowing 
where the good loot is going to spawn in those containers because labs has a certain loot multiplier that makes it better than the other maps so the average duffel bag is going to have much better loot kind of like streets like the clips featuring the marquees for example if you're a legit player there's just no way you're going to be able to loot the one jacket on the map that has a marked key in it it just hurts the legit player base to have really good items spawn in random areas that only a cheater is going to be able to see after taking some of the high value loot spawns i was able to have pretty good uh, success with getting people to wiggle back at me and that's exactly what happens in this next clip i uh, looted the map ran around stole a bunch of items and i was finally able to get this player to wiggle at me who i had suspected was cheating but he was super closet and he didn't want to admit it um, so after stealing all those items he started wiggling back at me and from there i tried to set up an interview so after voiping him for a little bit and explaining what i was doing we ran to safety and it looked like he'd be completely down for the interview unfortunately he wasn't after i was ready to set up shop here he decided to pull out his gun and kill me i'm not sure why but uh we're gonna give him some screen time so you guys can see his stats i mean look at this and this guy right here is what this video is about he's got 1200 hours he's got 3 kd less than 50 percent survival rate barely any achievements so if you got killed by this guy you would not suspect for a second that he was cheating but he is Okay, this next clip I'm including because it's just insane. I spawn in, I notice there's a blue folder at the safe below red room. So I sprint at it immediately. And then uh, looking across the map, I could tell something was going on. And, you know, these players are looking at me through the wall. They're coming right at me. So right off the bat, I, I think these guys are cheating. And they are. They're 100% cheating. So I take the blue folder. I don't even have time to inspect it. I just get out of there. I run up the stairs. And I'm thinking, okay, I don't need the blue folder, but these guys want it. So I try and set up an interview and use the blue folder as leverage. So that's exactly what I do. I tell them, I'm like, yo, I know you guys are cheating. You know that I know that you're cheating, so there's no point in denying it. Well, they kept denying it. And so I told them, I was like, look, if you answer some questions, I'll give you the blue folder. And then we can go our separate ways. But uh, what happened is as soon as I told them that it was for a YouTube video, they took off. They didn't want to hear anything more and so they ran away i guess they were paranoid and then we started playing uh cat and mouse and he just kept running away and i'm chasing him uh but he did end up giving in which was pretty sick so i chase him in a parking and he gives up brother stop running <laughs> come back here for what i'm not doing an interview buddy your boy want to do it? He might do it. He might do it. Ask him. He, he, might, do, he might do it. He might do it. All right, look, gentlemen. I know for a fact you guys are both cheating. Please, just give me the interview. What does, I need the it, what does that matter, buddy? Bruh. What, what, what does that matter? matter? All right, look. I literally clipped it. You sprinted to the blue folder at the beginning of the game. I'll give it to you if you do the interview. I promise. I'll I'm give it to you. Though. Uh uh. Bullshit. Just do it. I'll give you the folder, man. Yeah. So now I'm confused because now he wants to do it all of a sudden. I'm so you're confused. Good, good. So now you want to do the interview? All right, you ready? I'm going to start asking questions. Yeah, yeah, what's up? How many hours do you got? Uh, like 500. Have you been banned before? No. So I asked this guy what he was using, and he says that he wasn't using ABS, but I still wanted to include it in this part of the video. I can't name, I can't name it, it's private, but it's not what you said, it's not ABS, and it's not the other shit. On labs on NA servers, how many closet cheaters are you seeing per raid? Uh, at least, if it's a full lobby, at least like two to three. Why are you cheating? Well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm cheating, but I mean, a lot of players cheat just because everybody else is cheating. Yeah. When did you start playing? Since the day it came out. So how do you only have 500 hours? Uh, I took a break. In your experience as someone who definitely isn't cheating, do you think that closet cheating has become more oh. of an issue than rage cheaters killing you across the map? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Def I don't. You don't really get aimed at across the map. Closet cheaters like 90% of the time. You didn't, I never really get hard luck from across the map. Do you think that it's possible to cheat for thousands of hours and avoid getting banned? Because I've definitely seen it. I'm curious um, how many people that you have seen that fit that description.
Oh, oh there, yeah, there's tons of them, tons of them. There's a lot. There's so many people that cheat in this game. There's just a lot of them. There's tons of people that do that, 100. percent you know, I've seen cheaters with you know EOD accounts in level 64, 65. You know, crazy high level cheaters with 7,000 hours of cheating. It's just, it happens all the time. That's all I want to include for that interview. All that happened afterwards was I just dropped him the blue folder and then I left the game. Now I want to move on to the second method of closet cheating. This method is very different than the first method, which was short term. This method is the long term solution to closet cheating and avoiding bans completely. And the way they do this for the second method of cheating is these cheaters are utilizing a method called DMA cheats. DMA cheats allow a cheater to avoid detection completely so the battle eye cannot ban them. And that's why they're able to go for thousands of hours, months on end, cheating. Now, if you don't know what DMA is, there are videos on YouTube that go in depth and explain it well if you're curious. But I'm going to give you a brief, uh, brief overview so you understand. Okay, so DMA stands for Direct Memory Access. It's a technology that allows memory to be accessed, read, or manipulated without involvement of the CPU. DMA cheats are basically hardware level cheats that utilize a DMA card. A typical DMA cheat setup involves two computers and the DMA card. The DMA card plugs into the PCIe slot of the gaming PC's motherboard. The two PCs connect together with a USB-C cable that indirectly bridges them. The cheat itself runs on a secondary computer where there's no anti-cheat to stop it, and then reads or manipulates the memory of the game running on the gaming computer. That's the best way I can briefly describe the way that this cheat setup works. All that you need to take away from that is that there's no way to detect someone running a DMA cheat. Now we're about to enter territory that is slightly too in-depth for the making of this video, but I did want to specify quickly that there is one way, and only one way, that an anti-cheat, let's say BattleEye, can detect a DMA cheat setup. That is, by the DMA card's firmware. If an anti-cheat is able to successfully blacklist the firmware that a DMA card is using, then anyone with that specific DMA card will be banned because that firmware has been blacklisted. However, there is an incredibly easy solution to this, and that is disguising the DMA card's firmware so that it looks like another device. So this is exactly what these DMA cheaters are doing. They have disguised their DMA card's firmware so that it looks like a Razer keyboard or a Bluetooth adapter or a network card, something like that. And so when the DMA card is plugged into the computer, Windows recognizes it as whatever it's been disguised as. So if Windows can't recognize the device that's running on the computer, the anti-cheat's not going to recognize it either. So basically the situation that we currently have here is anyone cheating with the DMA setup that has the DMA card's firmware disguised as something other than what it is, the anti-cheat isn't going to be able to ban them. And now if you combine this style or tactic of cheating with legit looking gameplay, then what you have left is a monster of a closet cheater, someone who is never going to get banned, because BattleEye can't ban them, and BSG can't ban them. So that's what we're currently seeing with these cheater streamers who are streaming the game to an audience, and it's only after that they've been exposed that people realize that they were cheating. So that's what these crazy DMA cheats allow people to do. They can stream to a live audience, and not even their chat knows that they're cheating, because they can disguise their gameplay well. That's everything I have to say as an overview for DMA cheating. Now we're going to get into the interviews that I had with these players. I want to begin with this first interview, and it was with a cheater streamer that I met on Labs, and he openly admitted to everything. Before I play the audio from this interview, I just want to explain that uh, this interview I had to stitch together essentially because there was this second guy who we also thought was cheating, but he never admitted to it. But he kept asking questions uh, when I was trying to interview the actual cheater that was trying to talk to me, and I just stitched it together the best I could, but that's why there's so many different cuts. And bro, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> Wait, so hold up. You're streaming and cheating, right? Yeah, bro. Why not? Yeah, on Twitch? Okay, like, can people see the ESP yeah, and all that? Yeah, like suddenly toast, bro. Just like suddenly toast. Yeah, so can people see the cheats? That's respect, dude. Like... So do they know you're cheating? No, no, no. It's hidden. It's hidden. It's hidden, dude. I mean, bro, like, it's pretty obvious, right? Like, that's yeah, yeah, right yeah. There. Okay, okay. So let's start with this. Most important question. Are you using ABS? Nah, dude. That, that shit's for... Okay, so what are, what, what are you using? Yo, y'all need to look up DMA if you haven't... Shit's not detectable. 
Okay, when you load into Labs raids, how many of your raids have cheaters in them? Uh, it's hard to tell because people try to hide it these days, right? Um, yeah. But I would like to say every raid has at least one like a soft cheater, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, like, are you able to look? You're able to look at that. Yeah, I can see your stats right now. You got like a 5 KD. Okay, so yeah, yeah. what you can see his KD. Most cheats don't do that anymore, yeah. right? Did you buy like a lifetime subscription to that or is that monthly? Yeah, of course they sell lifetime. That's the best option, bro. Oh wait, how about this? How oh, about this? Water. Would you would you be willing to give me your Discord? So long story short, we left the raid, I added his Discord, and then we hopped in call. When he joined call, he showed me a quick overview of his stats. He's got 600 hours, he's got a 6 player KD, he's done 1500 raids, and he's cheated the whole wipe. So this is what I'm talking about, right? This guy's never gotten banned and he most likely never will be. I also want to briefly show the radar he's using. It shows the players and the loot on the map, and it also shows a lot of advanced stats uh, that most other cheats don't have. You can see player KD, account level, account hours, and all that good stuff. And he was willing to keep sharing his radar with me, so we ran a couple of raids looking for more cheaters to interview. Using his radar, I ran about 10 raids or so with him on labs, and I think there was only one raid where I could say with absolute certainty that I didn't think there was a cheater. And now what we were able to do um, with the footage that I'm currently showing is we had some guys looking at us down the hallway with direct line of sight. I was kind of like, hey, what's up with that? I mean, you can just tell like when there's a red line looking at someone, that means that someone is looking uh, directly at you locked on with direct line of sight. So we found these guys that we thought were cheating and they 100% were, but I just want to show the footage. Yeah. I got a buddy who's a hatchet too. Oh, what? Okay, that's what my friend's probably seeing. <laughs> Wait, why are you guys hatch running? I'm oh. here to interview cheaters. Oh. Uh, yeah. Is. Got some content I'm trying to make. What's, good? What's up, brother man? What's bothering? Okay, how do we proceed with this? Cause how do you find cheaters? Uh, It's actually been pretty successful so far. We got reason to believe one of you folks might be cheating, but if you guys are not open to uh, discussion on that, then no worries. Why do you think we're What's cheating? What's the reason? You guys want you guys down for an interview? Wait, what why do you, do you think, think we're cheating? That? Why? Well, you see, that's what this guy's here for. He's moral assistance. Uh, yo, 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 so once these guys knew with absolute certainty that we were aware of the fact that they were cheating, they decided to kill us. But I think the main reason I wanted to show this clip was that it highlights that these guys have no shame in lying about the fact that they were cheating. Like we knew that they were cheating with absolute certainty and they just still wanted to deny it anyway. And that idea right there just points to the greater picture of what closet cheating is doing to this game. The people that are doing it don't want to be found out and so they'll lie about it at any cost. And this is exactly what you're going to see in the following clip. The footage featured from this clip is from the POV of another cheater that I know on Discord, and while we were looking for interviews, we came across this guy named Mikey's World. I'm including this clip in this section of the video because I would bet my money on the fact that the cheats that Mikey is using is a radar and he's using DMA cheats. He did not know where we were. We made zero noise because we crabbed all the way from the dark hallway to Sector G, which is where we're at now. You can see Mikey looking at my buddy, who's wiggling at him through several walls. Then, he comes right over to him and shakes his cursor back and forth. This is the equivalent of a wiggle for a radar user. It implies that he doesn't have ESP. We tried to get an interview, but he kept denying that he was cheating after that. Bro, you're retarded. <clears throat> I'm not even cheating. Like, I don't even know why, why you keep saying that. You're dumb. Dude, if you keep... Alright, you quit. No, dude. Fucking idiot. 
So I want to show this guy's stats, right? He's got 2,900 hours. He has eight player KD and he's ruined 2,600 raids. This guy's a prime example of a closet cheater. I mean, he just looks really good at the video game. He's got 22 achievements. He looks really good. He's level 62, but we know that he's cheating. Knowing that this guy is a cheater at 2,900 hours, I think it's safe to say he's using a DMA radar cheat because there's just no way anyone would risk cheating for that long without having uh, DMA assistance. That's everything I have to say for the Mikey clips. Now, the following footage is an interview that I had with a DMA cheat radar user who I reached out to on one of the DMA radar discords. And we were able to have an interesting discussion. And the reason I'm including this is because his situation is kind of unique from everything that I've researched. He's actually using a free radar that he got off of GitHub. And I've never seen anything like this before. The fact that you can cheat with a free cheat and it only works because of DMA. So he figured that out. And so I want to show you guys this footage. Uh, what made you want to start cheating in the first place? Um... I don't know. You kind of get cornered in a way. You're like, everyone is starting to do this, and I really li enjoy this game. So I guess I I pretty much started because I die to too many cheaters. That's that's really why. And rats. I really don't like rats. Rats is more of like, I should just suck it up because that's a part of the game. But mainly cheaters, like... 10 KD and 70% survival rating like every time I die. So I want to ask you, uh, you're using a radar cheat that you got off of GitHub for free. And Correct. I'm just wondering how you're able to use that without getting detected. If you can explain that. So the DMA, of course, uh, reads game memory. And it will send it over to the next computer that just makes a regular uh, system call or... And that's that's all it's doing to stay undetected. It's just reading data that's being sent to it. It does get sketchy when you write back to the game. So when you reduce recoil, reduce sway, uh, draw night vision on your screen, that does get risky. But you know you can you can still do it undetected because you have the firmware that's on there. Um, I just like to do the reads. A lot of people like to do the writes with the DMA. I just do game reads because I'm not too uh, sure about the riskiness and the uh, game writing. So I'm curious if you could tell me, how does the radar help you? What do you use it for? Uh, I use it to avoid uh, players. I usually try to avoid fights. I'm just so sketched out of getting in a fight because there's such a high probability of coming across someone who's auto-aiming and I cannot fight against that. So I really just use it to avoid players and get tasks done without being like absolutely bullied. Um, yeah, that's I'd say that's probably how I use it the most. Item locations, like say there's a Ledex on the map and I haven't seen anyone run to it, I will definitely go and pick that thing up. Yeah, I use it for questing the most. It's just like in a quest assister. This is pretty much what it is. And then, um, uh, of course, anything worth of high value that I might be able to snag up if no one else grabs it. After our interview, I asked if he'd be willing to go labs and get some footage with the radar. And he did. And here's the interesting highlights. Right now, but that these guys are tracking me. See that? I'm behind a million ass walls and not even near him. Let me try these guys. Come on. They, they're digging out by her. Is this guy coming to me? All right, let me let me fuck around and drown for a little bit. Let me run. Yeah, get him to wiggle at you again so I can get that um, from this perspective because I got both their streams up at once. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on, boy. I know you see it. this guy. I think this guy's fine. It's these guys over here. <gasps> Come on. See, there's these guys are probably closeted. I could go to that GPU though. Let me see what happens if I go to a, a million dollar GPU item. Oh, see, why are they looking at me? Try to wiggle on them.
can't see me from here. They really have no reason to be looking in my exact direction. Like, oh, did you see that? He's, w <laughs> He's wiggling at me. Oh, this guy too. Let's see. Let's wiggle this guy. These guys are wiggling at me. Let me look more straight at him like that. You see this, right? Yeah, I see this. Uh, this, this is, is your first mm, raid on. My first raid right, on, on see left. See if you can go interview him with VoIP. I'll go there. <gasps> No frick! This guy want a little bit of that action too? No, he might be chilling. These guys definitely wiggling at me though. You're not even, like, you guys aren't even wiggling. This is the new radar wiggle technique. You're shaking your crosshair so it shows you gotta go that way. <laughs> yeah, and then make a right through those doors. Not that door, the other door. I don't know what they're looking at. They're looking at me. I don't know why. You gotta go to them. Kind of don't want them to kill me, low key though. Actually, they can already see my name. Who is this? Oh, oh, this is this is uh Raiders though. Let's try to get these guys. Come on, you. You know you want some of that. Oh, they're killing people. You see them get removed from the map. What, you want some? What, are you just having fun looking at the wall or what? Okay, let's go over to these guys. I'll tell this guy to not kill me. I'm on his team. Okay, I'm pulling up. This these this guy right here that I'm wiggling on, this guy in the red might kill him. These guys are not friends. Oh, he is. He's throwing a nade on him. Yeah, these guys are trying to kill each other, so they kind of. Oh, this blue guy killed him. He killed one of the cheaters. So, since that cheater right there died to this guy in the blue, I'm assuming this guy is just using radar. And he's not using auto aim because there's if he was he was wiggling at me through the wall, so he's he should definitely he's definitely cheating, but he's not cheating hard enough to kill a legit. This guy might be legit. I'm assuming. Let's go run up to this guy in the red. That is the last cheating interview that is going to be featured in this video. I think this is a good place to leave off, uh, wrapping up our discussion on the second method of closet cheating, which dealt with DMA cheats being the ultimate form of closet cheating as they provide zero risk of detection. Because there's only two methods of closet cheating and that was the second one, we have nothing left to talk about. And to end this video completely, I just want to provide a brief overview of my points as well as some key takeaways. The main premise of the video, and this is what the video builds off of, is the fact that Tarkov's cheating problem is really a closet cheating problem. The guys that aren't closet cheating, they're eventually going to get banned because just too many people are reporting them, or the cheat they're running is detected. But when you take the closet cheater who's using an undetected cheat and they're using their efforts to look legitimate, then they're just not going to get banned because BattleEye can't ban them and neither can BSG. So that's the issue with uh, closet cheating. It, it really is just common sense. Closet cheating, you don't get banned. Rage cheating, you do. That's why you should closet cheat. And then again, that's why most people are now closet cheating. When someone goes and decides to closet cheat, they use one of two methods. They either decide to do it here and there occasionally, or they decide to do it long term. We spoke about ABS being the short term solution for closet cheating, and we spoke about DMA being the long term solution for closet cheating. I can tell you with absolute certainty right now that ABS could absolutely be stopped. All these stupid public cheats that anyone can get for very, very low cost need to be taken off the market.
And there's only really one effective way to take these stupid public low cost anyone can get cheats off the market. And that is for BattleEye to start doing a better job. And BattleEye can only do a better job if B BSG equips it with the resources too. So BSG isn't going to manually be able to take down these stupid public cheats, right? The cheat developers themselves are going to take them down because cheat developers don't want to sell cheats that will get their users banned. Because it's not exactly a good look if the cheats that you're selling are getting people banned. When it comes to cheating as a broader whole, it all comes down to incentives and repercussions. When we're talking about cheating, the incentive not to cheat is a ban. That is the repercussion. You cannot have a game, especially Tarkov, function very well when the integrity of the game is built on the fact that you can cheat without a repercussion. There are no incentives not to continue doing that. This video and the footage likewise raises many important questions. There are questions that I don't have the answers to, but there are a few questions I'd like to quickly address. Like, do you blame the player or do you blame the game given the current state of this game? To that, I would say that BSG should not be letting the cheating situation be determined by the moral compass of the players, and that's what it's currently being run off of. There's nothing stopping players from cheating, and there's nothing stopping them from continuing to cheat. Bans are supposed to stop players, and people just aren't getting banned, and that's all thanks to closet cheating. After going through this video countless times, I was convinced that there had to be an overarching theme that envelops everything presented in this video. After carefully searching for this answer, I think that one final question is raised. Why not closet cheat? Because after all, who's gonna know but you?